Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 100 Days of Hardcore Ark Survival Evolved here on the Scorched Earth map. Hey yo, what's up? Before we begin, a couple of mentions. Luke the Notable for the 100 Days idea. Jade Plays Games. Who'd have thought a YouTube buddy for those cave tutorials? And Ascended Gaming for some tips on the boss fights. To you guys, I say thanks for helping this Ark Mobile script. So, let's get into it. Scorched Death. Not one for the faint hearted. Day one will decide your fate. Will you survive? Or will you end up running home to mommy? Whichever it is. Scorched death will definitely make you cry for your mommy. <laughs> mommy! I'm going to die for me! Nah, I survived. On the other hand, I am overheating and need water ASAP. So I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, yeah. Great stuff. Two hours later. No, fit already. Who would have thought? Day two, we made it past our first night. Yeah, we did a couple of things during the previous day in overnight. I wanted to find out if we could bowl our, a thorny dragon. I was quite curious. Let's just say, this time, this time, yeah, I wasn't on the right track here. Run, guys, run! What are you doing? Stupid. Well, I survived once again, but day wasn't over, so yeah, I wanted to get a little bit more hide. Hmm, now this looks juicy. Come here, you little screeb. Come to Papa. Oh, I have a little present for you. Take that, you little screeb. And that. Just stand still. Okay. While I look inside you, if you don't mind. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna call it a day. See ya! Day 3! Nothing too serious today, but I did notice that there was a dire wolf around the area the previous day. So, I mean, getting something like that earlier on in the game would really help our progression. So, I decided to go ahead and build a taming pin. Now, <laughs> that's all I did. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh jeez, run, yes, run, yes, oh no, please, let me make this, please, please, I beg you, let me make this, I, I promise to do everything you ask me to do, I'll even go to church and say, please, let me make this, oh no, it's coming, it's coming, oh. what the frick, jeez, what freaking levels are these, oh well, I guess it's the best I can do, so, I'm gonna tame it, that's what we did. We then fed it some hyena down prime meat. We got really lucky, because uh, they can attack you. Oh, looky, looky, we did some upgrades to our base. Even a small dino pen for our die wolf. We couldn't go full width here because basically you would be crafting an oven. You would cook yourself in base. We then got our forge and smithy. Uh, yeah, things are looking good for us. Day six, we ventured out a bit. When I mean a bit, I mean like a few meters away from base. We wanted to get some levels and while doing so, I spotted a Jaboa. Now, these are pretty cool pets on Ark. They actually are very good at predicting the weather. If you don't have one, it's kind of a disservice to you. So yeah, I just had to get it, of course. Besides, I believe you can get a good sports package with these. Day 7 I was a bit more braver than the previous day so we ventured out a bit further. This time I wanted to go ahead and tame a flyer and those little moths seemed to be the perfect choice because they were quite easy to get early game. Well that's what I thought. The first problem was those freaking no levels. Second problem they wouldn't just darn Man, why is it so difficult to get something so useless? I then gave up because this wasn't happening today. Ah, oh, yeah. Day 8. What a sad but joyful day. I did 
have enough of seeing those freaking low levels so i went ahead and changed the level settings for this playthrough and with that we spotted something really cool to tame yes i i actually found a decent level die wolf which um yeah we kited to our little taming pen though the sad part is we sacrificed casey for the greater good of this playthrough whoa and welcome level 142 direwolf day nine i went out looking for a berry collector the morella tub seemed to be a great choice we did find one close to base though we had to take care of some of its cousins we eventually went on to tame our preferred morello tops i quite liked the color scheme it had really beautiful you won't escape me today friend i'm gonna get you now take some of that with a little bit of that a tiny empty bit of that oh dear dear me remember the moth we got down the previous day whoa it got eaten by a die wolf rip me the cool thing is i spotted a dodicarus yeah if we could just mind the levels it was still a great find day 12 i went on to upgrading our current base to adobe yeah it's a bit of a grind because you have to get a whole lot of things cactus with sands mix that together to get clay and then use clay with some of the other resources to finally get the adobe structures uh, it's just madness but it does help with the crazy weather system that scorched earth has so i'm not complaining or anything just saying. Day 13, I decided to scrap the idea of upgrading our current base and rather prepare for our more permanent base. I did have an idea of where I wanted to settle down, which was perfectly situated close to a watering hole. With that nearby, we didn't really have to worry. I then proceeded to place down the base I had prepared. Now, doesn't this look good? This was kind of strange. I've never seen this before. This orgy was flying to, to nowhere. I don't know what it had. But eventually, it did stop. Thank the Ark guys. Uh, we did have a pre-bolt taming pen, which we placed down. I was able to get the RG in and tame it. It was also a freaking high level RG. So I was quite excited about that. Yeah, so I had a bit of a problem. I had an RG and it was level 60. Those two don't go together. Because to get an RG saddle, we need to be level 62. So I went on a little hunting spree with my dial. Just shredding everything in our path. Hoping to get the two more freaking levels we needed for the RG saddle. I mean, it was quite satisfying in a way. Oh yes, I was a free eagle. With this in mind, it was time for us to take the rest of our stuff at our old base and take it to our more current base. Now with our RG, we were able to finally get some taming done. The next on my checklist was an Anki. It's quite easy to get one this time around and quite easy to tame as well. Darn it. Okay, one second. All better. Considering I was not familiar with the land, I decided to go for a little adventure to see what cannot be seen. Besides, I needed a couple of crystals and obsidian for later use. Day 18, I had to extend my base because we had this huge freaking gigantic piece of metal to put in base. Yes. I crafted a fabricator. I also had enough materials to get myself a couple of cryopods. Ooh, looky looky, what we have here. Yeah, you see, right? 150 Kano, max level. Duh, of course I'm gonna tame it. I have a pre bolt taming pen in my bag. So, yeah, you guys put two and two together. We're having peanut butter and jello tonight. I'm just kidding. We tamed it. Day 20, we didn't do anything fancy today. We just went around looking for some explorer notes to beef up our RG and Kano, myself included. We also got a few supply drops along the way. And uh, yeah, we just enjoyed this chillaxing day. Whoa, what might this be? 
It's Kano clobbering time! To be honest, I did get a bit nervous towards the end, but we managed to get a freaking cool Rex ghost skin. Amazing! Ah oh, yes, the previous day I spotted this beautiful cat. Instinctively, I brought it to my taming pen where I could go ahead and tame it. I mean, we need it. You know why we need it. Forgave it. Right? Sleep well, my little kitty. Day 23, we started our caving expedition. Yep, we needed those artifacts, right? Because we want to go and face them bosses. Wait. This doesn't seem right. Ah, there we go. That's much better. Finally, <laughs> the artifact. Uh, by the way, I had to restart Ark. Righto, off to the next cave. Now, this one was a bit tricky, scary, and messed up because there was a rock elemental guarding this artifact. Had no freaking idea how to get rid of this thing. So I did something really insane and I almost got killed for it. So, uh, <laughs> do mind the greatest escape of all mankind. That's super close. It was day 25 when I spotted this beautiful looking thorny dragon. It was quite a high level and we needed a wood gatherer. Plus we had a taming pen close by. So for me, it was a complete no brainer. Day 26 to day 30, I decided to go ahead and upgrade our base. Now I didn't have a blueprint per se, but I did have some sort of idea of what I wanted the base to look like. Of course, things like this here take forever to build. I mean, it's, it's a trial and error here, plus we're working with Adobe. Though, I must say, it did turn out quite nice. I even have little spots for my wyverns, which I would be getting somewhere soon. So, I finally found the high level moth. And I was determined to tame this one and for it not to get away from me this time around. Oh, never mind. Here she goes. Alas! I had a secret weapon. You're not getting away from me this time around, punk. Yeah, Cam's had one of those crazy ideas. Um, I had this red candy or uh, some candy for, for, for the dino that would increase your speed to about 15%. Um, I, I put it on an Archie. Yeah, and then try to. <laughs> oh yeah, get get, get an, a wyvern egg, my first wyvern egg. I thought I'd be faster than wyverns. Yeah, it was, it was scary. It was really scary, though I did use some of the dinos here. Oh, just be careful, yeah, be careful. Oh, oh what you doing, guns? Chill, I think we're safe. Yes! Victory! Victory to camps! I think I need a party break. See ya. Yeah, so I had my wife an egg. I mean, you can't blame me. I was super excited. I wanted to get it hatched ASAP. It turned out I needed way more ACs. It's a good thing I picked up a couple of their oil pumps. I just needed to place them down and grab a couple of other resources while I wait. Time to get on my grind, comes. Day 34, I spotted this little beauty the previous day. I had to go and prepare for it in order for us to tame it. So we had our pre bold taming pen, and all we had to do was find a good spot for us to place the taming pen down and kite the ricks into it. The rest was fairly easy. Day 35, still on that grind, we built a couple of forges. Uh, I mean, a whole lot of forges. And then went on that metal run. Day 36, yeah, this was was quite interesting. I needed some poly, right? So I went to the desert part of, of this map uh, where we could actually get poly from the mantis. <laughs> uh, this is how much of a noob cam says, man. Oh, frick. Do I even have to tell you what I tried to do? Uh, <laughs> no, what? I'll just show you. I'm not gonna speak. Alright, let's just have a moment of silence for camps, please. Oh my god! Wow! I did some research on Wyverns and I came across something really interesting. A lot of peeps been saying that we don't actually need Wyvern milk, that we just need to tame a Deodon and the passive healing thing in my 
would help you revive it when it's growing. Uh, you know what? I thought it was an FT idea, so that's what I did. I wanted to take my data down and try it out for myself. Please note that I don't know about this, so I'm just going with what I've been hearing or reading in this case. Yeah, so I finally had everything ready for my wife and egg and all I needed to do was hatch it. Everything seemed to be working. I had enough ACs, I had the day of dawn healing my wife and yeah, it was all just peachy. So what would be the first thing you would do once you've got your wife and? Hmm. Well, for me, I went to get my second wife and well, it's egg, of course. Day 40 back at base, back again with another wife and egg, this time a slightly higher level one, and all we had to do was hatch it, which seemed it was going to be an easy task considering we already have everything for this egg. Oh frick. Day 41, you guessed it, I needed wyvern milk, so I froze my baby wyvern and had to prepare for the capture of a female wyvern because they are the ones that produce milk. It was a bit tricky because I used my Argentavis to kite the wyvern in, though it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would have been. And with my freaking OP ascend and a crossbow, I was able to knock out this punk and grab myself some juicy wyvern milk. Yeah, it turns out that I didn't really need wyvern milk. When you freeze your baby dinos, it does reset the imprinting demands. So, um, rip me. Although, I did spot a decent level Rex, which I needed to tame, of course, because we need our Rex army ASAP. We already had everything prepared, so, uh, you know what it is, man. We got the tame. Day 43 is when we began to work on our Rex army. Yo, 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 before we go, just, just take a look at this. How cool is this? Anyways, yeah, we started mating our Rexes with the hopes of getting some decent stats. Needless to say, really, I just, I wasn't impressed. By now, I noticed this part of the map was a Rex spawn, so I frequently killed off the lower levels. And on this day, I found a beautiful high level Rex, which will be a great addition to our breeding line. Yep, I did quite like some of its stats. Uh, it's melee, not so good, but we can definitely work with it. Ah, yes. Day 45, I took a stroll with my Thala into the cave to get the third and final artifact for the boss fight. And like I said, it was a stroll, so it wasn't that difficult. With my Thala, we can basically take on just about anything in the cave, so I wasn't phased at all. Day 46 to 47, I used these days to go ahead and breed a pair of mated Rexes that had the similar amount of stats, so we can use those to breed for the boss fight and at the end of it this is what I came out with and I believe these two Rexes are the perfect match oh boy yeah I uh, took on a behemoth task uh, <laughs> well um, yeah I think I bit off more than I could chew here because I decided to go ahead and secure the area around my base with behemoth gates use them as uh, a wall or a gates or something to uh, protect our little area here. It took me like forever to, to get these resources and put them together uh, to get those many freaking gates. Day 51, I needed a couple more resources to build a few more ACs back at base for my awesome Rex army that I'm about to begin with. Day 52 to 57, I worked solely on breeding my Rexes, trying to get ready for that big boss fight. At the end of it, we had about 14 adult Rexes, all with the stats that I preferred. Though we weren't really ready just yet, because I obviously have to go and level them up. But it's progress, peeps. Progress. Day 58, surveying the Wyvern Trench, I was in search for another Lightning Wyvern Egg. Yeah, I did some research. Turns out you can breed Wyverns. It has been for a while, but I'm a... PC noob, so ha, <laughs> I didn't know about that. Sounded cool though. Whilst on the job, I was attacked by another lightning wyvern. So I took this opportunity to take it on because we needed those wyvern talents. Anyways, later on, I found a decent level wyvern egg, which I proceeded to steal. 
because now you need to do it here. Hoping it was the one I needed. Day 59, I went for a little meat run. We were running low on that, of course. I then went ahead to hatch our wyvern egg. Ooh, this was it. Darn it. Another female. Day 60, I started training up some of my Rexes. Now, um, they weren't any alphas, or I didn't notice much alphas on the map, except for alpha wyverns, which is kind of difficult. So we went for the next best thing, which is the death worms. And with those, we got crazy amounts of XP. Oh, and the horns needed for mantis taming. Ah uh, yes, in day 61 I needed to grab a couple of resources to craft my chemistry bench. Now I needed that to up my production on cementing paste because uh, yeah there's no beavers here so uh, it's kind of difficult right? Not really. We got the chemistry bench and turn to chitin. Day 62 done with my chemistry bench I needed just a bit more resources to craft the main crafting station. Yes peeps we finally have the freaking indie forge. Now we're talking. Day 63 and 64 I took a few more rexes to the desert to level them up by defeating some of the death worms and also to grab a couple of death worm horns. Now, you guys know where I'm going with this, isn't it? Day 65, I decided to try my luck with Mantis Taming. I know this can be very difficult because they have quite a wide aggro range, but I still wanted to try, right? I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. Sometimes, on Ark. As I predicted, this wasn't such a good idea, so I scrapped it and decided to take the Mantis back to base where I built a taming pin for it so I could try and figure this thing out. If you didn't notice, I didn't have a greenhouse yet, so that wasn't a problem though. At the time of recording, it was the Halloween event and in those Halloween drops we had crops in them. Well, some of them. So I just had to farm a few of them to get the required resources to craft bug repellent. Now using that, it made taming the matters very easy. And I must say, it worked like a charm. We also had a bone wyvern skin and a ghost skin for the mantis. And boy, did it look amazing. This is a quick one. Metal grind. Oh dear. Day 68. I thought I'd... Try my luck with taking on a dodo wyvern. Yeah, um, it was much tougher than I thought, even for a lower level. So we didn't have much luck with that. Though we did take out a fire wyvern, which adds more talent for our boss fight. Day 69, I took a few more rexes to level them up. Yes, the same way as before, we took on death worms. It's the only way. Well, one of the better ways. Day 70 back to the desert part of the map I was looking for more wyvern talons. This time we found another fire wyvern and took it out. Its trophy? The talon. Its purpose? The boss fight. Well, yeah, I, I need way more than what I have currently. Day 71, I finally had a mated pair of wyverns and it was my time to try my luck at breeding them. Yeah, I, for the most part, I just really wanted to try it out. Turns out that it wasn't too bad. It could have been better, of course. Could have been. I also needed a couple more resources to craft absorbent. Yeah, I needed it to craft something else. Day 72, in my efforts of getting more black poles, I needed to go ahead and farm a couple more death worms. And at the same time, I was able to go ahead and level up some of my rexes. I was soon able to craft what I wanted to craft. Yeah. We needed some gas mask. I did my research and they will help with those uh, poison wyverns and also the dodo wyvern. Day 73, armed with my gas mask and wyvern, we set off to the wyvern trench. This time around, I was not afraid of those poison wyverns. So much so that we didn't just take out one poison wyvern, we took out two. What a victorious day. The early hours of day 74, I decided to try my luck with that dodo wyvern once more. It was a valiant effort. What a fight. Though, we did fall short once more. Yeah, that that that's just a freaking OP freaking piece of thing. You? Well, at least we live to tell the tale. You see that UT right there? Yeah, that's the one. 
I really wanted to tame that. I had a taming pin and everything for it. I mean, I even went as far as placing down the taming pin. And then this happened. Darn it. Anyways, let me just go off to this alpha wyvern right here. I'll try my luck, you know. That wasn't too bad, was it? Now, that looks so much better. Wouldn't you agree? I'd say so. Anyways, I needed to craft it in the cooker. Needed a few resources here and there, which I went and I got. And I was able to craft it in the cooker, which means one thing. I need to start working on my greenhouse. Yeah. Day 77 to 80. Yeah, you guessed right. We worked on our greenhouse. We needed one anyways. We also needed loads and loads of resources though. That wasn't really a problem for us because we had the right dinos for the job. We also did some things in between, like take out this beautiful Jabbar, which gave us some nifty presents. And also we needed some dung beetles, so I set off to the desert part of the map where we grabbed a couple of them, which should complete our greenhouse build. Day 81, first off we went ahead to tame a Jaboa. Somehow we'd lost our previous one, though well, this time around we found something really cool, I love the color of it. We also did some farming, the actual type of farming. Now you'd get a look at the greenhouse that I've built as well. And lastly, I got myself a chibi with all the Halloween event items that I have collected. Day 82 to 85, I figured that I would rather go for the beta boss requirements. Yeah, I needed a couple more wyvern talents, so we headed off to the wyvern trench to do our business. And at the end of it, beta requirements were checked and I then decided to go check up on my crops. It was so peaceful. Yeah, it wouldn't be Scorched Earth if you didn't tame a Rock Elemental. That's what I wanted to try. It's been a while since I've done this. So uh, yeah, I had to go ahead and prepare for it. Needed to get some uh, cannons and cannonballs, of which did take quite a while to grind up, of course. Ah, oh, look at this cute little fella. Moving on, I then went in search for a decent level Rock Elemental, which I eventually found one. And kiting it back to my taming trap didn't really seem to be a problem because this rock elemental could traverse the landscape quite easily. The problem came to when I had to trap it. Apparently, I didn't really take into account the size of the rock elemental. I had to kite it away and then work on my taming trap once again. Now with my taming trap fixed, it was time for me to trap the rock elemental, which wasn't that difficult. But... I say but because we had to start using the cannon and of course I am not familiar with the cannon because it's been a while since we've done all of this. So we had to learn all over again which did have its learning curve and the first couple of cannons were dreadful. <laughs> so dreadful. Though eventually we got the hang of it and yeah we got it spot on from then onwards. Getting the freaking rock elemental down. I just couldn't believe it. Day 88 is when the rock elemental finally tamed up. Man was this a freaking long tame. I On the other hand, I did find an ascendant saddle. Whilst I was drop hunting one of the days, it made this sort of a, a tank, right? I mean, I really had fun playing around with it. Collected loads of sand and stone. Couldn't move after that, of course. So I had this crazy idea. Just, just hear me out, right? What if, just, what if I tamed an army of vultures to take on the Dodo Wyvern? What then? Well, I guess I thought I'd find out. So, here we are. With a bunch of freaking vultures. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> oi, oi, oi. There was no freaking way that I wanted those 40 to 50 yard vultures to follow me all the way to the desert part of the map. Yeah, so I had to think of another way. I decided that I would go and craft 40 or 50 yard cryobots. That in itself was a grind. Oh my gosh. Camps, what were you thinking? Yeah, I had to get all of them into the cryobots, right? That takes time. A lot of time. Day 94, I just did some maintenance around base, checked up on a couple of our Rexes, and got some things done around there, because, uh, yeah, it was almost time for us to uh, leave camp. Day 95 to 97, we camped outside the Wyvern Trench, hoping the Dodo Wyvern would reveal itself. Yeah, we were a bit unlucky. So, uh, we took on some of the normal Wyverns. A couple of them low levels and we took them out quite easily. We did have a really high level wyvern which gave us a bit of a problem and took out most of our vultures. But 
we didn't manage to defeat them. They were pretty good, so I was just hoping we could try it on a Dodo Ivan. Just so unlucky. Day 98 to 99, last minute preps were on the way. We needed some med brews. We needed to sort our Rexes out and also get the items ready for the boss fight. Yeah, man, time to get pumped.